Oh no. Must get to dimming screen with finger. Too late. Great. Now I have to pick up the phone and look at it for it to come on. This is terribly inconvenient. I think of the group of the Peking Duck Luncheon Group. I want to talk about Polly. Paul. I called him Polly. Good Cajun Catholic, man. It was all about the Pope up in that house. Oh. Remember that story I told you about Hank? My, my man Hank. If you could just live, get one of those experiences like once a month. <laughs> I want to live, well, forget 10,000 years. I don't want to live forever. If I could get like one, you know, one experience like that a month. I do love people. I do. Yeah, Polly, a good Cajun Catholic. He was the first to go. A ripe old age. Okay? It's kind of a prune juice crowd that I had been welcome, welcome into. I didn't put the ED on there. I did good. I loved because welcome should have a past tense. There, sorry. It's just a personal thing. What a, a fine group of men. Yeah, let me talk about. This Cajun Catholic. Oh, I was in there one day. And I want to say there was one, two, three and a half. Because Mikey, nah, Mikey probably about my age. My, nah, this big family now. This is a rich, rich family. Oh, you see the pictures of the grandchildren up on the wall. Well, the house is no longer in their name. I want to say the daughter probably had POA when the mom passed away, you know. Yeah. I remember the first time, well, it's not the first time he saw me being a dork, because I'm, I'm the child there at uh, 35, okay, 40, 35, 40, these men are all up in their 70s, and I the infallibility of the Pope. Oh, I live for that. I live for that. I live for that. There was three of them, like I said, three and a half. Mikey was kind of like, eh, despondent. He doesn't like, get swept up into all that religiosity. But I do. So I'm going to say it was Polly, his wife, and his, and his gorgeous daughter, Gorgeous daughter. That really can't use me because I'm not a needy creature. She likes to bring pets home. Stray pets. I'm not a stray pet anymore. I was a long time ago. But God daddy kind of emended. <laughs> if you're listening, Cindy, that's right. That cost you a dollar, didn't it? The Lord emended. Yep. 
the infallibility, the infallibility, the infallibility of the Pope. What a wonderful family, rich family, good family. Yeah, he was the first to go. I remember one day looking around at him and was like, I want to thank you all, you... I probably did say the B word. Uh, yeah. The male the male version of the B word. And they all kind of looked at me and I said, you've invited me into your death pool. And they all kind of, you know, hey, they had to take it. Nobody fired back at the kid. The wunderkind. Nobody fired back at him. Because they, I, they knew I, I was speaking the truth. Statistically. Statistically. I mean, nothing's promised, but statistically, I'm get, I said, I get to watch each of you die. Thank you. Now that you've all become my friends. And I was. I was genuinely kind of, I was pissed at him that day at the luncheon. Yeah, Polly was the first to go. I believe it was Polly, and then it was Robert. Polly was special. He had that, just that, put you at ease. He was so uh, gregarious. He was so, just, just so full of life. And in a charming way. He didn't put you ill at ease. He didn't put you back like I do. And yet, yeah, we're very similar in a lot of ways. i never forget the first time I made some exclamation. I didn't get my torture cookie. Or I didn't get my orange slice. That's what it was. Because you know how I feel about torture cookies. I don't really, you know, I only use them as props. <laughs> talk about God, Daddy. But, okay, neither here nor there. Yeah, but I didn't get orange slice one day, and I said, Sacre bleu! And I mean, this Cajun, he just started to roll. Yeah, that old man almost fell out of his chair right there in the Peking Duck. Yeah, he did. He thought that was the cutest thing. I think it's on a par with taking the Lord's name in vain, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see Polly again one day. The last time I heard him, heard his voice. Was that? The service at his service in uh, in Old Town. And I remember sitting in the pew, and I remember seeing his daughter's uh, partner live in. It, her man, her man, a bit older, a little bit older. She, 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 she brought home the strays. That's who she was, okay? Wonderful woman, wonderful woman. But she was a bringer home of strays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He used to joke about, Polly used to joke about her, her boyfriend, her partner, I don't know, did common law, what at that point, they'd been together so long. <clears throat> and the last words I heard Polly speak to mine being was in his chortle, in his chuckle. In the church, at his service, did I hear his, his wonderful voice chuckling. He said, 
Grandpa. As his daughter's partner stood up. He always called this guy Grandpa. Because he was so much older, Paulie felt, than his daughter. Uh, you can call that delusions. You can call it uh, whatever, imagination. <laughs> Can't be mass hysteria or mass hallucinations because I'm the only one that heard it to the best of my knowledge. I am. Did I hear it? Or did I manufacture it? I don't know. I liked Polly a hell of a lot. I did. But it wasn't like he was a father figure to me. I did love the man. And, and it's mutual. You know, good Christian man. We, we love each other. But was there a, a place near and dear in my heart for him? No. And I think the reciprocity is, can also be said by Polly. We're just good friends. So did I imagine that when I saw this man stand up? Did I imagine all the times I had heard Polly call, refer to him as Grandpa? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to go with the second one. Keep your head on the swivel. Be ready to receive messages. Because both forces are right there ready to give to you. I love y'all. Peace.